women, servants, lay ministers. And the process that we have to go and find a new pastor is really pretty great. Um, it's better than the dating game uh, or, or any dating website because the process involves taking and surveying everybody in the congregation, assessing what are our needs, and then matching up pastors who will work really well with us. So they can be with us, grow with us as we go forward. In the, in the meantime, we have a lot of other people to come in and give sermons and work with us, and we'll get to know a lot of people. And there's some people coming uh, to do services for us who are really excellent, very outstanding uh, pastors who are going to come and help us out while we're going through this process. So we are going to get a pastor who will cherish our abundance, join in our growth and our reformation. And during the transition, we'll be blessed with wonderful servants from talented pastors and lay preachers. While we wait and prepare for a new pastor, we invite you to participate fully in the vibrant life of the congregation and join us in prayer as we continue to serve God and God's people. Today, our lay preacher is Robert Sinclair. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Come to worship, welcome to worship today, guests and members. We are glad to have you here with our faith Lutheran Church community. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Amen. Our first announcement, um, I'm going to invite Diane Kiki to uh, make an announcement. Yeah, okay. We're going to use the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Diane Kiki, Mary Ann Folio Whitford, and Mama Harold Whitford are my folks. And as you know, my mom passed on January 17th. On January 27th, there is a service at noon at Miller Jones Mortuary. Uh, we will be here in the fellowship hall afterwards to celebrate her life and her love, and we want you all to know you're welcome. And I personally want to thank you, I'm sure along with my brother David from Tennessee, uh, and being her church family, and we hope to see some of you there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Monday the 22nd, the endowment uh, committee meets on Zoom at 4. Wednesday the 24th, the finance team meets at 1. For the month of January, we're collecting boxes of stuffing, mashed potatoes, rice sides, Spanish rice, rice pila, bitter rice, grocery bags, MTA partners for the community, and all that for the community covered. Please place the donations in the wire basket in the foyer. And there currently are 75 sides that have been collected that have lost the rest. The stewardship committee is looking for donations of a barbecue. If you've got a grill sitting at your house that you don't use, and it's in decent working order, let me know. I'll find a way to come get it. What we're going to do is we're going to try and set up a patio for events that are going to come up in the future. So if we have a few grills out there, It'll make a nice event space for a large uh, group of people. The unbirthday party, if you went to that, you know it was a wonderful event. Thank you very much to those who put it together, complete with decorations and cupcakes and candles. And I want to congratulate Frank on eating all of the cupcakes except the part they don't handle <laughs> so that he can eat his cupcake and light it too. <laughs> And people are obviously still talking about the event. Um, okay, so please stand if you are able to join. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, 
Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and made ourselves into the power of our sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us of our sins, known and unknown, things you have done and things you have failed to do. Turn us again to you and help all of us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Now please uh, join us in hymn number 661 in the book, The Gathering Song I Love to Tell the Story.
God speaks to us in preaching, song, and scripture. <coughs> Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever felt that God was calling you to do something? If so, how did you react? Two of today's Bible readings describe some very different ways in which people can respond to God's call. So let's begin with the story of Jonah. If anyone tries to tell you that there's no humour in the Bible, just point them to the book of Jonah. The whole book is a hoot from <laughs> beginning to end. I would imagine Imagine it as a comedy show on TV, something like Adventures of Jonah, the Reluctant Prophet. <laughs> the story starts with God telling Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and tell the people there to repent of their sins. And Jonah really, really doesn't want to go to Nineveh. The Bible doesn't tell us why, but perhaps we can guess. In ancient times, Nineveh was the capital city of the mighty Assyrian Empire, which conquered most of the Middle East, uh, including the Kingdom of Israel. And the Assyrians had a well-deserved reputation for being brutal, vicious, and cruel. Nineveh was a huge metropolis, so big that it took three days to walk from one end of the city to the other. Jonah might well have thought that asking the people of Nineveh to repent was the best a waste of time and might even result in his own death as a bringer of bad news. And why should Jonah put his life at risk to save the enemies of his own people? So instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah decides to go to a place called Tarshish. We don't know where Tarshish was. Uh, it might have been in North Africa, or perhaps in Spain. Uh, some people have even suggested that it was in Britain. But the point is, Tarshish was about as far away from Nineveh as it was possible to get in the ancient world. So, Jonah gets on a ship bound for Tarshish. And the very fact that he was prepared to travel by sea shows how desperate he was to avoid Nineveh. People in Old Testament times were terrified of the sea. It was the great unknown, a bit like outer space in our own time, and it was rumoured to be the home of huge sea monsters like the dreaded Leviathan. We all know the story of how God sent a storm, the superstitious sailors throw Jonah overboard, and he ends up being swallowed by one of the dreaded sea monsters, who at least saves Jonah from drowning. Jonah thanks God for saving his life, and after three days the fish spits Jonah out, and he ends up on dry land again. And now, take two. Again, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. And this time, he obeys God's commands. And, we suspect very much to Jonah's surprise, the people of Nineveh respond positively to Jonah's message. The whole city repents in sackcloth and ashes, even the animals. Well, I'm not really sure what they have to repent about. So there we have it. A happy ending. Mission accomplished. The people of Nineveh give up their wicked ways and God decides not to destroy the city after all. But not so fast. Jonah is furious that God has decided to spare them. And again, the Bible does not really explain why Jonah reacts in this way. Perhaps he is concerned about his own reputation as a prophet, what people will think of him, 
if his prophecy about Nineveh is not fulfilled. Or perhaps he does not think that the repentance of the people in Nineveh is genuine. <coughs> After all, they were foreigners. Why should they be treated more mercifully than Jonah's own people? Jonah is so upset that he wants to die. Perhaps at this point in the story, he starts to suspect that Jonah is a bit of a drama queen. <laughs> and the story ends with God trying to persuade Jonah that sparing the people of Nineveh, not to mention their animals, really isn't such a bad idea. The story of Jonah sounds like a case study in how not to respond to God's call. But before we are too harsh on Jonah, we should ask ourselves whether we have ever behaved in the same way. Have we ever been tempted to run away when we are faced with God's call for action? I know I have. Or perhaps, like Jonah, we are too inclined to try and tell God what to do instead of listening to what God wants from us. Perhaps we are too rigid in our expectations of what the future will be, and not open enough to God's grace. There's a famous saying, if you want to make your love, just try telling God your plans. Or perhaps we are too concerned with our own reputation and self-image to allow God to work through us. Let's briefly compare and contrast the way in which people respond to the call of Jesus in the Gospel from Mark. And what a contrast it is. In the Gospel story, there is none of the drama and agonizing which we saw in the story of Jonah. We'll be hearing a lot from St. Mark over the coming year. So we'll come to recognize that the hallmarks of his style are simplicity and brevity. There's no waffle in Mark. You just come straight to the point. So Jesus goes for a walk beside the Sea of Galilee and calls out to Peter and Andrew immediately which is one of Mark's favourite words. They leave their fishing boats and follow him. A little later, he calls James and John, and they too, immediately, come and follow him. No questions about where are we going, how will we get there, how long will it take, should we pack anything for lunch? Though I do wonder whether the episode was really quite as drama free as Mark describes it. For example, how did Seraphy feel about his sons literally jumping ship and going off on some mysterious adventure? They didn't even give two weeks' notice. <laughs> when the first disciples jumped off their fishing boats, it was quite literally a leap of faith. There's one more calling story from the Bible which I'd like to discuss. When I was a child, I was fascinated by the story of the boy Samuel in the temple. He keeps hearing this mysterious voice calling him in the night as he is trying to sleep. To begin with, he does not even know who is calling him until the high priest Eli explains that the call comes from God. And so Samuel waits patiently for God to call again. Perhaps we find ourselves in a similar situation to young Samuel. Perhaps we feel that God is calling us to do or be something, but we are not quite sure what God is calling us to do. In the words of Martin Luther, 
It is most certainly true that each of us has a call from God. Martin Luther talked a lot about the priesthood of all believers. The idea that the Christian ministry is not just a job for the ordained clergy, but for the whole Christian community. Who is the most famous Luther of all time? Any suggestions? Well, apart from Martin Luther, <laughs> who, who would have hated to be called Luther, by the way? Bonhoeffer. Um, Bonhoeffer, that's, that's a good one. D.J. Bonhoeffer, being the smarter of the 20th century. Um, but I, I would like to nominate Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, many people think that Bach was the greatest composer who ever lived, but Bach was also a man of very deep faith. At the end of every musical manuscript which he wrote, he would add the words, To God alone belongs the glory. To Bach, nothing was more important than to give glory to God in our daily work. As St. Paul tells the Corinthians, there are many gifts and many different callings. Perhaps, like young Samuel, we are still trying to understand or discern in church and jargon what it is that God is calling us to do. Perhaps, like God, we are being called to make beautiful music, either literally or metaphorically. As we wait patiently for God to send us a new pastor, perhaps some of us are being called to take on new roles in our church community. That is something for all of us to think about over the coming weeks and months. Let us pray for the courage to answer God's call faithfully like the first disciples. I'd like to conclude with a verse from one of my favourite hymns, which reflects on today's Gospel story. In simple trust, like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord, let us, like them, Without a word, rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. Amen. Amen. You can turn to hymn number 697 and please stand if you're willing and able. <clears throat>
confess our faith using the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose to him. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give us your church wisdom and empathy in its very ministries. God of grace. This is our prayer. God is our hope and refuge. You place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and all creatures of living love. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace. This is our prayer. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy. Be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow you in your way of justice and truth. God of grace. God who cares for the suffering, care for survivors of assaults and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, those living in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain, especially Jamie, Brianna, Amy, Jolyn, Arnett, Vicky, Frank, Carol, Danny, Lorna, Patsy, Donna, Terry, Sandra, Thordis, Carol, Michael, Marilyn, Dee, Joyce, Diana, Michael, Peggy Wesley and family, Harold Whitford and family, the homebound emergency responders, and those grieving and anticipating surgery or tests. At this time, we also pray for those who name aloud was silently in our hearts. For peace in the Holy Land of Ukraine. God of grace, peace in our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, who hold your saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The, peace, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another.
that this time we remember that the giving of our offering is an authentic part of worship. Whether you give of your time, your talents, or your treasures, a combination of them, or are still discerning how you can give to God's beloved community. Thank you so much for all the ways you give and help to make the ministries of this church possible. Now, please feel free to relax and listen. We have our choir for today on the screen, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this very much.
Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought light into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people to Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life without, for, excuse me, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and grace. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and grace. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, we draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with, Je with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Join us in the sending song, Arise and Light This Come, number 314 in Memphis. Be of good courage, 
Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Enjoy the day and feel free to join us in the fellowship hall for coffee and fellowship. And if you're new, uh, we'll have some people from the council or we'll be glad to talk with you on your way out and say hello and answer any questions you may have. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Amen.